It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton here with you live on Supply Chain Now Radio. Welcome back to the show. On this episode, we're going to be speaking with one of the senior leaders at MHI, the nation's largest material handling, logistics, and supply chain associations. MHI is also the organization that powers two of the largest industry trade shows in North America, the ProMat and the Modex trade shows. Uh, On a quick programming note, like all of our series on Supply Chain Now Radio, you can find our replays on a wide variety of channels, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Spotify, you name it, wherever else you get your podcast from. As always, we'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss anything. So with that said, let's welcome in our featured guest here today, John Paxson, COO and CEO designate with MHI. John, how you doing? I'm doing great. Great great to be here. Great to have you. Uh, We had a great uh, interview with one of your senior level uh, leadership colleagues here a second ago and looking forward to diving in with you and and really gaining some of your uh, insights and and picking your brain as well. Great. So with that said, you know, John, where we like to start these interviews and these podcasts is is kind of give our listeners a sense of who they're hearing from, right? Um, You know, probably most importantly, your professional journey, the time from uh, what took place to getting you here today with MHI. So tell us a little more about yourself and your journey. Okay, great. Yeah, so so my journey started with uh, the company uh, DMAG Cranes and Components in the North American business. And what DMAG uh, was doing was uh, importing components from our German headquarters and manufacturing overhead cranes and supplying them in the North American market. So started out in uh, a role of software development, uh, moved into roles of outside sales, product management, and uh, and then for the past 15 years was the president of the North American business. And along with that, we had our manufacturing facilities in North America, but we also had a, a large service component. Mm. So we had, uh, in the crane world, uh, you have field service technicians that go out and service cranes, so that's a big part of the, of the cranes. Once you sell them, you have to be able to support them. You want to keep yeah. them running. Yes, so we had a, a large service contingency of uh, with 45 locations around the U.S. taking care of our products out there. Wow. Uh, and, and it's interesting to hear you uh, from a software background to um, hands-on and then, uh, and then senior levels of leadership, very well-rounded. Yeah, I mean, actually, my, uh, my training was uh, as a mechanical engineer, but uh, early days it was in software design and, um, and developing systems to automatically uh, design and develop uh, products. And so, so back then it was uh, kind of high tech. Now everybody has an app for something. Right. But uh, but through the course of that, had many different stretch assignments and uh, ultimately ended up leading the North American business for about 15 years. Outstanding. And and you joined, uh, tell us more about when you joined MHI and more importantly, what opportunity did you see? Why did you join the organization? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so actually it's uh, interesting, uh, my career, uh, uh, my regular career also was augmented because we were a member company of MHI. So uh, through the uh, course of being a member, I attended MHI events for about 20 years and then moved into the MHI volunteer board uh, Mm -hmm. level. So first off, being president of some of the industry associations, the Crane Association and the Monorails and the Hoist Association. But then after that, uh, actually moving into the board and finished with the chairman of the board position uh, for MHI. So from there, uh, I gained the background of not only the product uh, side and the market side, but also really the day-to-day operations of MHI. So I kind of came to MHI with both of the member perspective Mm. and also the operational side of MHI already in place. Mm. So the opportunity uh, came where George Prest, our CEO, was looking to um, looking to retire at the end of 2020, and they were looking for his successor. and uh, And the opportunity arose. So, with my background, I thought it was a perfect fit. Wow! Well, congratulations. Uh, that's a huge. I can only imagine 
uh, the burden and responsibility that comes with. But also on the flip side, uh, the, all the opportunities that you have that as you lead MHI into what's next. That's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, it's quite a dynamic time for uh, for MHI and for the industry as a whole. Absolutely. You know, we, we were talking earlier, and, and heck, we talk about it just on every show. Um, it's such an exciting time to be in the end to end supply chain profession, in some way, shape, or form, right now, when it has a seat at the table, uh, un unlike ever before. You know, mm -hmm. especially with the the global nature of business that uh, that's never going back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the reliance of how, uh, and we're going to talk about this in a second, uh, but supply chain is what makes it happen. It's what allows us to enjoy those things in those two-day time frames, soon to be one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's, before, I want to get your, your input on leadership in a second, but if, if you could, just for those that... Um, that may be new to MHI. In a very small nutshell, what what does MHI do? So MHI is um, it's a member uh, company trade association. So we have about 800 members, and they represent all different areas of the supply chain. So primarily, they're manufacturers, consultants, and integrators who are providing the solutions and the technologies in warehouse distribution and manufacturing. Mm. So we represent uh, those companies and. Collectively, uh, MHI focuses on, on really four uh, core values. And those are, the first one is market access. Mm -hmm. So helping uh, these uh, companies connect with the customers and connect their solutions mm -hmm. with customers. We also have a value center of connections. So networking, mm -hmm. the opportunity to share, to collaborate on, on different uh, developments in the marketplace. We have a, a knowledge component uh, to help our members make better business decisions. And then we also stake out a leadership or an industry leadership uh, position. And that's where we're developing safety standards, uh, uh, product publications and uh, specifications and ANSI standards to really help guide uh, the development of products and guide the industry. So, mm -hmm. so we're, we're delivering for our members on those four um, pillars of, of value, and those pillars also relate to the users of these type of equipment. Mm. So. And there's so much interest and demand in finding information and best practices across those four pillars. It's, you know, someone that has volunteered in the uh, associ industry association space for 15, over 15 years now, mm. folks are constantly looking to connect with the resource or connect with new network colleagues, or, you know, fortunately, safety seems to have taken a, a front seat uh, over the last 10 or so years, which is a, a welcome development. So it seems like y'all are bringing a ton of value to the table. Yeah, and, and members, they find value in, in any or some or all of those components. Mm -hmm. So our members come in and they're looking for some are smaller companies that are just getting started, some are emerging tech, some are large, very large corporations, and each of those has a unique thing that they're looking for from a value point of view. Mm -hmm. And and our objective is to, is to deliver on that. Mm -hmm. And and similarly with the users, uh, when they come to the MHI members, our members represent the industry leaders, the, the people who are driving the industry and who are leading in the technologies. Mm -hmm. So it's a great place for the users and the buyers of these types of equipment to connect yeah. and, uh, and find the leaders in the industry. Um, so we're talking here with John Paxson, COO and CEO designate with MHI. So John, as, as a senior leader here at the organization, a rock and roll organization, uh, really enjoyed, as I was telling uh, George earlier, uh, I volunteered on the executive committee with the Georgia Logistics Summit back in 2018 when it was co-located with MHI and learned a ton, went to my first Modex event and, and really enjoyed ourselves. Um, so as a senior leader, let's, let's talk about leadership for a second. So out of all the different traits and attributes that go into making successful leaders. And we all know leaders are built in much different ways. There's a wide diversity in terms of, of how folks approach uh, successful leadership. But if there's one attribute that you feel is more important than any of the others, what would that be? Uh, for, for me, it's, it's the team. It's building the team and building the, the collaboration and the teamwork and developing the team. That, that for me, in, uh, in MHI's world, uh, we have about 30 people on our team, and what they're able to produce and, um, and to deliver at either at our trade shows or our annual conference 
is really based on a complete, collaborated, highly motivated professional mm -hmm. team. And for my role, it's to, um, it's to develop them, to help them, support them, uh, provide direction, but without the team, uh, mm -hmm. leadership, it's, all the other things just don't matter. I'm with you. Uh, great answer. I love that. I think that, that speaks volumes, because especially with an organization that puts on the huge shows such as ProMat and, and Modex, you've got to have an engine, a V8 engine behind those things. Um, okay, so, so moving right along, let's talk about um, uh, how industry is evolving. And, and you know, I know you've been here about a year, uh, and that might sound like a short period of time, but the rate of change just continues to get faster and faster, and a lot, of, a lot is taking place in a year. But how do you see industry evolving over the last couple of years and into the next few years? Yeah, so, so when I look, you, know, you can read about trends and all the different things that are going on, and I, I kind of break it down a little bit more simple um, from the technology trends. I break it down more into the, into the customers, the consumers, and, and what's going on in the marketplace and the demands. So if you think about it in your own personal life, uh, I want to pick up my phone. I want unlimited selection. Right. I want to press the button, and I want it delivered to my house, uh, or I want to drive by and pick it up. And uh, oh, by the way, I don't want to be charged for that. And while you're at it, why don't you uh, track some of my searches online, my previous buying habits, and be able to predict what I might be wanting. Right. And send me that information too, and I'd appreciate that because then I can buy that those things also. So. We can all relate to that because mm -hmm. we, you know whether whether you get an Amazon Prime package at your door every day or, or once a month or whether you go to the grocery store and drive up and they put the groceries in the back of your car. Mm -hmm. But all of these type of expectations, um, what it's driving in our industry is is phenomenal innovation mm -hmm. because the only way to meet those uh, those requirements or I mean it's two ways one meet them or or just keep up. Or, or get ahead of the curve, uh, depending on where you are in that cycle. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that really is to, uh, is to innovate. And uh, so, so what that's driving in our, our marketplace is, in the past, warehousing distribution was take a pallet, mm -hmm. put it on the shelf, get a fork truck, take it back down, stick it in the truck, and send it to a retail shop. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's, uh, we want to take an individual piece we want to package it, we want to label it, we might want to customize it, and we want to deliver it in, mm -hmm. in a one-day time period or, or hours, could be hours. So that completely changes the dynamics of the warehouse, the supply chain, how you get it uh, last mile, all those dynamics have completely changed. Even the retail process has changed. Um, so people say, oh, retail is going away. I think, I think retail, many of those stores are in a good position if they put the automation in those locations. So customer demand is driving it, and then from there, we, you know, we can talk more about robotics and automation mm. and artificial intelligence. Those things are, are being spawned by the drive for innovation. Mm. So before we dive into uh, some of these other trends and, and, and maybe the ones that are most fascinating to you, do you feel that the um, consumer market, consumers in general, you know, beyond you and I as consumers, because we kind of have, we know kind of what's on the backside mm -hmm. of why we enjoy these these one day, two day delivery times. Do you, do you feel in general the global consumer universe, uh, as it were, is is better connecting that you that consumer experience and that those quick um, service levels to end end supply chain that makes that happen? Yes. So, you know, there's there's a couple of components to that. You know, there's the idea when I just want, I know what I want and I want it fast. You know, that's one type of shopping. You pick up your phone, right. search, press the button and you got it. So, so that, and, and that supply chain, you, you, you know, you're, you're looking at not only where the product is and the inventory and handling it and packaging it, but then, then there's the other experiential mm -hmm. side of buying things. So the experiential side is I want to see it, I want to touch it. Uh, and oh, by the way, I still want it delivered to my house very quickly, or I want it immediately. And and it's it's an interesting uh, way that this is developing the marketplace. And the companies that are leading in this are finding a way to deliver on both pieces of that. 
Absolutely. So that's that's um, what we're finding is, is really interesting in, in, in the full range of supply chain, how you accomplish that. It's not just making it now and putting it on a shelf. It's how do you deliver it all the way to the house, to someone's house. Absolutely. And, and what we're seeing is it's, it's consumers are connecting those dots better. Mm-hmm. You know, we're seeing different um, different folks say the word supply chain that it was never on the tips of these tongues in you know, previous years. And, and that's neat to see because you know, that's going to help us uh, vie for talent in the industry that, that we serve in. It's going to help uh, folks better appreciate what takes place in, in, in these wide variety of facilities so they can appreciate those, those consumer experiences that, that, that you speak of. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's stick on the trends, industry trends um, uh, topic here. What else, you know, the, and you, you just rattled off uh, a few minutes ago, you know, IoT and, and machine learning and AI and blockchain, those are some usual culprits that, that folks talk about. And because they are fascinating and they're, they're transforming how business is done globally. Um, but what else, those, those or anything else in terms of topics and trends that you are tracking more than others right now, a couple of those. Yeah, so, so what, what we've seen, uh, and it's really developed over the past the three, three to four years and it's moving extremely fast, is, is the, uh, the arrival of robotics and automation uh, into the into the warehouse and distribution into the supply chain. So robots are uh, are, are not really new. Uh, they were they were always been in manufacturing as far back as we can go. You know, doing repetitive tasks. So welding out car frames, uh, cutting cutting certain uh, types of material, handling certain repetitive things. Mm. That that's been going on. That's not really new technology. But when you take uh, the customer demands. And actually, you know, the difficulty finding people uh, for warehousing distribution to to handle all of these packages and parts, the solution becomes robotics. Mm. But the challenge uh, with that is not everything that ships is the same. In fact, most of it is different. So you need speed, you need flexibility to handle different types of items, and um, and then you also need uh, the mobility. Mm. So what we're seeing now is, you know, robots with uh, with vision systems and 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 machine learning, mm-hmm. so that they can actually see things now. It's not just programming a robot and letting it do something. Now they can see what they're doing and make they decisions. can make decisions yeah. and adjustments. And then the other uh, developments are in the uh, the grippers uh, and the handlers on the end of the robots. So before you put a welding gun on there and it moves to a position and makes a weld and moves back. Mm. Now, depending on what comes out of the automated systems, you need to be able to handle it and grip it. So we're seeing those, uh, those technologies really advancing and you see those on display at the trade shows where it's amazing from one year to the next mm. what companies are developing. So, um, and then the other part of that is, okay, you know, robots were big and, and you know, you'd have to need a cage around them and you would have to mount them on the floor and, and, and put a big pit in place. And, right, and right. now robots are mobile. You put them on, a, on an AGB or an AMR, uh, automatic uh, robotic or mobile robots, and now you can travel around a facility. Mm-hmm. They have guidance systems. They have laser, laser systems that are safety for seeing, you know, so that they can see also. And now what you have is a complete, a complete, complete supply chain within four walls of automated systems and robotics. It is uh, the rate of change and, and, and the speed of that change it is absolutely remarkable. Mm-hmm. And, and this is what you're describing for folks that may not have been in some of these facilities. It is current state. This is not you know, future state technology. It's here and now. Uh, and 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 more. You know, next week it maybe it may be something more advanced. Um, you, you mentioned the trade shows, uh, and, and of course, Modex coming up in March 2020 in Atlanta. Uh, these are exceptional opportunities to get out and see these technologies. That you know, uh, one of my co-hosts, Greg White, talks about how basically folks come out to Modex, and some of them set up many manufacturing plans right there on the trade show. The, the scale and scope of it is really interesting, and and I think. One of the big reasons, and, and see if you would agree, John, to come out to the Modexes and Pro Maps of the world, is to gather the, you know, do your market intel by gathering, right? Connect, 
see what these organizations do and see what the, where the solutions are today and, and what's coming. Yes, yeah. So, so with the trade show, uh, you know, when we describe the trade show and say, what is it? It's, it's our material handling and supply chain industry on display. In, in one place, you can basically see the whole industry. Mm. And, and what companies do is uh, they, they are setting up you know, uh, automated uh, warehouse and distribution systems. They're setting up with robotics. They're setting up uh, uh, AGVSs. All these products are there and they're running. So you know, it's one thing to see it on, on a brochure, see it on a website. Here you can see it, touch it. You can talk to the people who are, who are doing the programming, who have implemented it. So it's, it's our industry on display. Uh, a lot of equipment is brought in for those type of demonstrations. And then the other part of it is, um, is we combine about 150 educational sessions along with that. So our member companies are, are producing and putting on educational sessions about the latest technologies, mm -hmm. what's going on. So you can come see the products, see the industry on display, but also it's a learning experience and you can learn about what's happening and where things are headed. So it's, a, it's really, I call it a two for one. It's not an educational conference. Right. Uh, it's, it's not just a trade show, it's really both. Absolutely. So and then you've got great keynotes, uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley, uh, Tan Lee, George, uh, George Press is gonna be talking about the State of the Industry Report. I think y'all interviewed, MHI interviewed over 1,100 business leaders mm -hmm. and, and basically asked them what's, what's keeping you up at night. That, that'll be an interesting keynote. And then for fun, you got Peyton and Archie Manning, mm -hmm. two, two, well, Archie certainly in the Hall of Fame. Peyton, he'll be there soon. He'll be there soon, <laughs> that's right. And, they're, and I understand they're taking the stage together. So that mm -hmm. should be a really interesting, uh, fun keynote. Um, and that's, you know, keynotes, of course, get people out. That's mm -hmm. what folk, who folks want to hear from, right? Yeah, and, and, and I, with the keynotes, um, we, we really try and offer a, co a component to the show that's even beyond the technical side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, technical side, learning about the products and the solutions. But uh, Nikki Haley, in her case, uh, the, was the governor of South Carolina, learning, uh, you know, heavily into the supply chain, heavily into the things that were going on in the ports and, and communication. So she can provide perspectives on that. Um, so, you know, we're trying to provide other types of uh, business leadership uh, perspectives. Uh, in Peyton and Archie Manning's case, uh, you know, you know, to to have with Archie Manning have two sons, you know, the right. two Super Bowl winning <laughs> sons, which is you know, and he's already a Hall of Famer. Right. Probably both of the other ones will probably get there. But uh, you know, how does that work, and how does that how does that feel, and and so that'll be more inspirational and leadership uh, type uh, discussion. So uh, we combine that. We also have um, a student days along with our Modex show where we'll have between 200 and 300 students coming where we introduce them through tours to the industry uh, at, at, at large. So, so we're introducing um, new students to the supply chain, looking to engage talent, and, uh, and we have the educational components at the, at the high level uh, and the uh, in, in the overall sessions mm. and then the specific technical sessions. I love it. And, and you know, going back to uh, the Mannings, Modex has a history of, of you got to bake in the fun factor, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the complexities and, and the professions and the hard working days and the stress, that goes across the business world mm -hmm. and, and certainly the Indian supply chain has our fair share of that. So, so everyone needs a breath of fresh air. You know, in the past, uh, Micro with mm -hmm. uh, Dirty Jobs, I believe, has been one of the keynotes. Uh, Jim Gaffigan, I think, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, was one of the, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, breath of breaths mm -hmm. of fresh air. And so it's neat to see Modex continue that trend uh, because that's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the, on the Wednesday of the show, um, you know, we have uh, Peyton Manning and and, uh, and Archie Manning, and then we also in the evening we have Industry Night. Um, so. Uh, and, and we give out one of the key parts of that is we give out innovation awards. So the companies uh, from uh, who are part of Modex will, uh, if they have new products, they can apply to be uh, judged for innovation awards. Mm -hmm. And we have a panel of users, so it's not judged by anyone with MHI, it's mm -hmm. not judged by their peers, it's judged by users of the products will go around and actually pick the innovation award winner. Um, and it's really become quite a big event. Mm. Uh, if you can imagine with all the innovation going on and then to be someone who's picked as the top innovation award, 
Um, it, it's really quite an event. So we present that on uh, on uh, Wednesday night at the show, it's and then, yeah, and then we also have a comedian that in the evening to really kind of kick back and, and enjoy ourselves. So. Love it, uh, and, and you, know, you also have that competition factor mm -hmm. as folks are buying to finish first. So mm -hmm. sounds like a fun night. Look forward to that in 2020. Um, well, I appreciate your time and, and to our audience. So Modex 2020 is right around the corner, believe it or not. I mean, it's already November. Time flies right ahead. Uh, our our uh, time wastes no time, right? And, and uh, flying through the calendar. So we are going to splotch in our radio to be broadcasting live throughout all four days of uh, Modex 2020. And that runs March 9th through the 12th, again, in Atlanta, Georgia. And John, one of the neat things that we're excited about is we have partnered, actually, we partnered with MHI on a couple different levels, mm -hmm. uh, not just to help um, uh, drive content and, and sit down with, with uh, leaders to get their insights and their thoughts and their perspective during the event, but uh, Modex is also going to be hosting our 2020 Atlanta Supply Chain Awards, which we're really excited about. Uh, Christian Fisher, President and CEO with Georgia Pacific, is going to serve as our keynote for this second year event. And uh, we're expecting 300 people, uh, which is a big number for us, but Modex is expecting 35,000 of our best friends and neighbors to come out at one of the largest uh, supply chain trade shows in all of North America. Um, and is it, it's free to attend, if I'm yes. not mistaken, which, which is unheard of. Yeah, it's free to attend. So, uh, so the idea is that um, to allow um, people who are interested in this equipment to come to the show free of charge, come out, see what's happening on the floor, interact with our members, and, and it, is, it is free of charge. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, so to learn more about Modex 2020, you can go to modexshow.com, M-O-D-E-X show.com. Again, as John mentioned, it's free to attend. What an incredible learning opportunity and networking opportunity, uh, best practice sharing opportunity. Uh, you will not regret that you came out. It's going to be a trade show not be missed. Uh, now, with the Atlanta Supply Chain Awards, it's a little bit different. Uh, there's a small registration fee. Our nominations, uh, registrations, and sponsorships are all open. And you can learn more at, at AtlantaSupplyChainAwards.com. Big thanks to John Paxton, uh, COO and CEO designate with MHI. I'm looking forward to not only you know, seeing through the, this year and through Modex of, of what MHI does, but you know, your vision as you and the team executes on it in the year, in the months and years ahead. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. And, uh, and the technology, it amazes me every time I go to the show. Every year, there's brand new products, brand new companies. It's going to be really exciting. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Learn more again at modexshow.com. So to our listeners, uh, check out other upcoming events, replays of our interviews, other resources at supplychainnowradio.com. Uh, you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever else you find your podcast from. Of course, we'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss anything. On behalf of the entire team here, this is Scott Luton wishing you a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Radio. Thanks, everybody.